how did you come up with my Corona? What was the inspiration behind it? I spent a few days just looking at my walls and, and worrying about my family. My mom's in a nursing home and I haven't seen her now in over a month. We were not used to dealing with this kind of situation. And I thought enough of all the negativity, and I'm just talking about myself, how negative I, I want to make a difference. I think uh, the solution to how we're going to live, how we're, we're going to survive and how we're going to thrive is down to us, the people. So I stopped looking at it like, oh, it's this thing going out there. And I started owning my Corona. This is my Corona experience. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I was thinking of. And the funny thing is that in episode one, I had my brother and Kevin Bass on there. And I had no idea what to call this thing, but that had been mulling in my mind. So really this series of interviews is all around how is everyone dealing with their own Corona experience and, and how are we becoming more powerful coming out of it? Because that's, that's what I consider winning out of this. Where did your curiosity for other people's success or discipline come from? Is there something you can pinpoint? I've had so many transformational experiences from even being a little kid. My parents sent me to Dale Carnegie. My school had a little mm -hmm. Dale Carnegie program. So I started public speaking in sixth grade. I remember the earliest little achievement thing. My parents sent me to, in like in first grade, to a chess school. And I learned how to, you know, it was just like, it wasn't really advanced. I don't know how far you go, you know, but I remember winning this little chess trophy and I'm like, oh, I can do that. And then just learning how to, how to be a better public speaker. And then in my elementary school, I was a valedictorian. It was a Jewish day school. So we had four day schools. And I thought, I haven't talked about this in like years. I can't believe it. Anyway, <laughs> so we had four day schools and we had different languages. The valedictorian in each had to give it in a different language. And, and my school was French. Mm. So I speak French, but, you know, I didn't speak French well enough to give a speech. So I had to learn to write a speech work with my teachers and my parents to make sure that the grammar was all good. And then I had to actually say this speech in front of, I don't know what it was, something like 400 people. So just those kind of experiences really made me hungry for like, how do people get better at what they do? How do they know how to do that? The other really big influence in my life when I was in college, my Hebrew professor is actually a grandmaster in Tai Chi, karate, and all forms of martial arts. And I started doing martial arts and meditation. And it was, uh, I, I guess meditation is the, is the earliest and oldest transformational thing that you can do. But if there's only one thing you can do in your life, if you meditate, really meditate every day, it will transform your life. So I guess wow. that's yeah. When you're working with people, what would you say is the most, what about that satisfies you or brings you fulfillment? I'm trying to say something that doesn't sound bullshit, but it's just <laughs> like, I hate the spotlight on myself, which is, which is why I'm so grateful you're asking me the questions. Cause I'm, you know, I hate that. So that's maybe something I can work on, but I, I think the satisfying thing is just the greeting namaste, the divinity in me acknowledges the divinity in you. Every namaste moment that I have in the day, Sometimes they'll, they might be very emotional or other times they might be just very uh, matter of fact acknowledgement. That's what fuels me. I have a Alex Gray print on my wall, which reminds me of all my peak experiences, whether it's through meditation or through certain courses or what have you. A man meditating, it's called ecstasy. And it's a man meditating. It's got his heart and his mind and the universe. And when I when I see the spark of divinity in another person, it gives me the experience of being connected to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel alone. And I feel like there's a meaning to my life and there's a meaning to the universe. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm after.